Tom Ground control to Major Tom Take your protein pills and put your helmet on Ground control to Major Tom <laughs> Mr. Gorbachev There's a fly ball foul down the right field line I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want Don't tell me what you want, what you really, really want Guys, help me get out of this thing. Well, that went a lot better in rehearsal, I promise. <laughs> All right. Welcome to our fourth Galaxy, Galaxy 18. I'm thrilled to be here. I'm thrilled to have you here. I need my clicker, by the way. Um, it's, it's amazing to see so many faces through this thick fog. Uh, hopefully, you guys can see me. Uh, I'm really excited that uh, one, of, one of the things that is going on right now. It's the 49th anniversary of the moon landing in 1969. So I don't know if you guys remember watching. It's actually next month on July 20th, and it was right about this time, thank you, that they, uh, the Eagle landed. It was actually 418 on July 20th, and um, it had a big impact on me. Um, this was a painting that I actually did when I was five years old in kindergarten in uh, Saratoga, um, California at Argonaut Elementary School, and I was really uh, sure that I was going to become an astronaut and that someday I was going to get out there and plant a flag on some distant land. And while I doubt that is actually going to happen, last week something at Xenos happened that was really special. We, uh, we had this giant crane come out in front of the building and hoist this logo up, and we planted a flag of our own. And it's a great milestone. And uh, today, what I'm going to talk to you about is our journey, how we got here, and where we're going. Um, but uh, that, that logo, putting that logo on the building is part of it. And it's a, it's a breakthrough journey for us. And, uh, but before I tell you about that journey, let me back up a little bit. So this is a picture of my wife and I. We celebrated 27 years together uh, a couple of months ago. We went to Hawaii. And we like to go on journeys when we, when we go on vacations that are adventurous, what we call breakthrough journeys. And so we got to this beach. We found it. I, I literally searched online. And one of the things, if you haven't done it, is sometimes I'll just use Google Earth and I'll look for uh, really crazy places. And this was one of the places that I found. It didn't have a name. It was a beach, a black sand beach that didn't have a name on it. And, uh, and so I could tell not a lot of people had been there. And it didn't look like there was actually any access to that beach. And so we found our way there. We had to meander through a cow pasture. And there was a rope tied to a tree that had been there for what looked like years. 
And I could see that the rope went down somewhere, but I couldn't see that the rope was actually long enough to get to the beach. It was about a, a 65 foot descent to that beach. And I convinced my wife to do it with me. There was nobody there, it was all, us all by ourselves. It was thrilling, we had backpacks on, and, and we got down to that beach, and we had a great time, and, and the good news is we got back out, so, so I'm here. Um, but that wasn't really the most poignant moment of this trip. It was actually in this place. This is a 300-foot waterfall in Maui, and I'm not going to say the name of the place out of kind of respect for uh, its sacred. You can find it if you, if you look really hard. But again, I was scouring Google Earth, and I kind of found this place. I followed a river up to this 300-foot waterfall, and I told my wife, if we get the chance, I don't know if it's going to happen, but if we get the chance, I want to hike to the base of this waterfall. So earlier this day, we had, been, we had done another hike that was several miles, and so we were already tired, and we were driving to this place, and we said, we're not going to do it today, but let's get out and just peek and get the lay of the land. And check the weather, by the way. Just, well, well, there was no kind of connectivity, of course. And so we said, well, let's just peek at the trail. Well, again, we're just dipping into a, a river here to actually get up to this place. This is a, another view of it. So this is this 300-foot waterfall, and you can see it's a box canyon, which is quite a dangerous place. And so we started up. And sure enough, you know, I talked her into doing it right then. I said, let's just do it. We may never be here again. Let's, let's do this hike right now. So we started up, and you know, about uh, two hours into it, I could see she was getting frustrated. And she was saying things to me that were planting doubt in my own mind. She was saying, you know, uh, it looks like rain. And how much further do you think it's going to be? And how are your knees holding up? All of these things putting more and more doubt in my head as to whether we were actually going to make this hike. And, uh, so the final straw came uh, here. She kind of asked me this question. She said, you know, it, it's starting to rain. I don't think there's anywhere to go. At what point will you give up on getting to the base of this waterfall? And I said, never. <laughs> there's nothing you could possibly say or nothing that could happen in nature that would make me turn around at this point. I've been doing this hike for two hours. I'm getting to the base of this thing. And, and that was the wrong thing to say. She was like, Okay, well, I'm done. And I was like, oh, no. You know, so I said, okay, wait here. I'll scramble up as fast as I can. I'll take a couple of videos, take a couple of pictures, and, or, or head back. You, know, you can head back. Maybe that's a better thing. And she was like, well, I'm all alone in this canyon. Okay, I'll head back. So I'll let you see kind of the scope of this thing that she was looking at when she took this picture. So that was it. She was, I didn't know if she was going to stay there or go back. I walked up to the waterfall. I'll spare you the, the selfie of me uh, taking it. But as soon as I got up there and took a couple of pictures, the, the heavens opened up and it started raining very hard. And one waterfall turned to three. And I realized I had put my wife and I in a pretty dangerous situation. And so as I looked back down to the canyon where she was, or where I was hoping she wasn't, I saw her head looking at me, popping up like a little squirrel or a prairie dog. And I was like, what are you doing still here? You know? And so the rain's coming down. And I could only think to yell one thing, run, which was the worst possible thing I could have said to her at this point. You know, it's rainy. There's nowhere to run. And so the next th her head disappears, and she's gone. And so now I'm scrambling as fast as I can on bad knees um, through this water and this, this, this riving, rising river over wet boulders. And we finally got to the, uh, we, never, we didn't speak the whole way, by the way. I caught her after about 45 minutes. Never a word was said. We got to the very end, and there was under this bridge, there were these, it was a jungle, and creepy crawlies were pulling them off each other. And we get to the car. And we get, grab towels, and we dry off. And, and, uh, and she looked at me, and she kind of was tearing up. And she said, um, you know, on that hike, I experienced every single possible emotion there is. And I smiled, and I said, including hatred? And she said, especially hatred. <laughs> OK? And this is the, the picture that I took as we were about to get in that car. She was mustering up a smile, but she was pretty mad. We talk about that hike probably every day in one way, shape, or form, there's a reference to that hike and that journey. And what was, uh, the reason I think that is is because it was a really big challenge for us. We did not know when we got there if we were actually going to finish the hike. Um, the second thing was it was a beautiful place. There was this mammoth payoff of seeing this waterfall and being in this canyon. And the third, we had someone to share it with. Right? We had each other. 
and a story to talk about forever. And so it's, our, it's one of our many breakthrough journeys. And that's what I'm here to talk to you about today is Xenos' breakthrough journey. We're right in the middle of it right now. And those three elements work perfectly to describe it. Number one, what we do at Xenos, it is a daunting challenge, not just for us as Xenos, but for you, our customers. What you're trying to accomplish is immensely hard. And I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to show you the big payoff for all of us if we do this right and when we do it right. And finally, you know, the fact that we have each other to share it with. If, uh, you know, I talked about the moon landing. If, if Neil Armstrong didn't say those words, you know, one small step for a man, which is what he actually said, one giant leap for mankind, if no one heard those words, it would have been meaningless. So you have to have someone to share it with for it to be a true breakthrough journey and a shared legacy. So let me take you through what I mean by that. So daunting challenge. So I talk all the time when I teach uh, um, or, or I, I talk to our new employees at what we call NEO, New Employee Orientation. And I mention why I joined Xenos and how important it to me that where I went was super hard. It had to be a daunting challenge. And I looked at all the other places that I could have gone and they were easier than Xenos. They really were. They were social media, they were wearables, um, lots of things that might have been fun, but I didn't feel like would have a massive impact on the world, on the technology world. And so um, I'll talk to you about that. And obviously JFK felt the same way. He wanted to do something that was hard. In the background were these three things. Digital transformation, which you're hearing too much about. I'm sure you're tired of hearing about it. But the fact is, when I joined Xenos four years ago, we were right on the cusp of digital transformation and all that it was going to be. Cloud evolution. I looked at what was happening with how Xenos was serving the market and the big four and all these other players, and I, and I was seeing cloud evolution play out, and I thought, wow, the big four are not going to be able to keep up. They're not going to be agile. And a startup could really disrupt this space in the middle of this cloud evolution. It, it could be the catalyst. And finally, the proliferation of devices, which has been going on forever and continues. It never stops. Changes to technologies daily. Our Zen packs have to be updated all the time. And I knew that our ability to uh, do deep infrastructure monitoring, because it was harder and more comprehensive, it would be our ticket. Okay? And all of that meant that this, there was this giant market that we could go after. And so I joined the company, and we were off. And when I looked at it from your perspective, and try to figure out what are you dealing with our customers. This is what we saw. We saw you had put in software, and you had put in hardware, and you had put in microservices, and you had done all this work to make your business work well. And then you said, OK, you know what? I'm now going to monitor a piece of that with a monitoring tool. And you cordoned off a certain group of functions, and you started monitoring it. But then one thing led to another and said, well, now we need to monitor this thing over here and this other technology over here. And it went on and on and on. And we know for a fact this is what your IT environment probably looks like, maybe a lot worse. More complexity, more opportunity to do something that is hard and solve this problem. In fact, if we look at now 2018 and some of the statistics that have just come out from an analyst firm, we see in the last 12 months an 88% increase in alerts that are being generated and information and metrics that are, you're having to deal with. 65% have reported that getting visibility into hybrid cloud is still a giant challenge. We know that's a fact. 71% have reported that their data is not actionable. And finally, 37% of the time there's an IT outage. It requires six or more FTEs to solve that problem. The problem isn't getting easier, it's getting harder. So that's where we come in. Xenos, our holy grail, this big challenge that we're trying to deliver for you, and we are delivering it, is, is, is that you, Gabe? That's good. I'm going to get you for that, buddy. And uh, uh, is this intelligent IT operations management platform and what it's trying to accomplish to talk and communicate with all these technologies as they're changing through Zen packs and ingest all of the metrics and all of the, the model data and create this real-time model of your IT infrastructure to prevent and eliminate IT outages. 
and to communicate that then to these other ancillary technologies that make up the ITOM uh, market space. It's a big challenge, and I love that it's a big challenge. Big payoff, what's the payoff? You know, so for, for Alan Shepard, you know, it was this picture, I think it's one of the most famous and important pictures in humanity, is seeing this picture of the Earth from the moon. Every time I think about politics, I want to show some of those politicians that picture. But it's, it's no different than when I looked at that waterfall, or, um, and, and it's no different than when you're looking at your businesses and figuring out what's the big payoff for you and your company of doing this right. And so these are some real payoffs that people in this room have told us that they're getting from implementing Xenos. And I realize I'm not trying to make this a sales pitch, but these are real things that you've told us. Mean time to resolution in some cases goes down by 99%. Event noise reduced by four nines. Licensing costs by not having to deal with so many monitoring tools down by 95%. And by doing more automated things from an IT perspective, reducing manual processes by 70%. Well, those are good, but they're not the things that I think about when I tell my kids and when we build this legacy together, when we think about what are we really doing to change the world as Xenos, this, these are the things that I look at, and I love these things. You know, a billion online prescriptions fulfilled per year because Xenos is making sure one of our customers is um, keeping their business online running uh, efficiently and at high speed. Monitoring, here's the this, this space one, monitoring 200,000 stars in the night sky looking for exoplanets, our next home. Uh, 500,000 stock transactions per day. 32 million licenses to satellite radio. My son would like the 1.5 million billion hours of online gaming. He's responsible for half of them. Two trillion in text messages. One billion people watching the World Cup. All with Xenos as a part of this. And we're thrilled about that, and, and it's, a, it's a big payoff. And then there's the business, right? How is Xenos as a business doing? Well, over the last five years, we've had a, uh, an annual growth rate in excess of 20%. And our SaaS product, which a third of you in this room own that SaaS, or leveraging, or subscribing to that SaaS product, in 2017, SaaS bookings grew by 340%. We're thrilled about that, 340%. Those are big numbers. Um, so now today, if you look at it, we've got uh, 400 Zen packs that are monitoring almost a million managed uh, resources, MRs, providing more than 100 billion performance metrics per day. Those are gigantic numbers, and there's going to be a big payoff in the fact that we have access to those types of metrics. Let me tell you what I mean. A year ago, I stood up here and I showed you this slide. And I think a lot of you were looking at me like, come on, man, you're not really gonna deliver that. And I said, yeah, we are. We're gonna build an elastic data store and we're gonna have dynamic intelligence and we're gonna put in uh, adaptive behavior and predictive analytics and real-time analytics and automated decision making and all of this, this bubbly gift that we have here, you probably thought you know, we were just full of BS, and we weren't. We meant it. We are going to deliver that now. And tomorrow is, you know, I, talk, I said this four years ago, this is the most important day in the history of Xenos. I said that to you four years ago at the first Galaxy. Today, I say it to you again. And I saved it for a good one. Today, over the next 24 hours, when we launch Google, <laughs> Google Cloud, Xenos Cloud on Google Cloud Platform, it is the most important day in our history. It's a multi-tenant SaaS platform, policy-based. It's going to use those 100 billion metrics to do real machine learning and anomaly detection. It's agentless, which is something we've talked about for a long time, but now we're going to add agent capabilities. If you wanted to leverage some open source um, uh, product out there to do some, some monitoring of um, uh, more ephemeral resources like microservices or containers, you're going to be able to do that. It's got a beautifully modern user interface. I was a part of it. I made them show it to me all the way. I was like, for once, I want to sell the prettiest product in the world. We're going to do that. Elastic data streaming. This is so APIs, so we can take information from DevOps. And then SmartView. 
This is to make it easier to do troubleshooting as quickly as possible so the user and the data is contextualized for that user and the role that they're playing. This gets launched tomorrow, and we're thrilled about it. So that's our big payoff together. And then there's the shared legacy. And I want to start by talking about our team here. So I'm going to flash a couple of pictures up here. You know, I spend an awful lot of time with this team, an incredible amount of time. Um, every day I wake up and I'm inspired to come to work by this group of people. And I know this event is about you. It really is. It's about you, our customers. But I do just want to take a minute to personally thank all the employees at Xenos for all of your hard work. You make it incredible to come to work every day. And with the customers at the center of that mission, you know, we can do it together, and we're going to do something huge. So first of all, it's about the team and the shared legacy we're building with this team. Second, it's about our partners. And there's many of you here today. Uh, many of you are sponsors. In fact, probably most of you are sponsors. And our vision of software-defined IT operations is only going to happen with you by our side. We're not going to do it alone. We don't plan to do it alone. We want to do it with you. Some of the things we're doing, 50% of our um, direct customers leverage our integration with ServiceNow. You know, it's an honor to be a part of that uh, ecosystem. It's an honor to be part of Nutanix and to be their monitoring system. And Google Cloud, as I mentioned, the backbone of Xenos Cloud that's launched tomorrow. They're an incredible partner, and, um, and, and we're thrilled to have them. But before I talk, and I'm going to talk about customers, because you're really central to this whole thing, but I want to back up for a minute and talk about our core values. Um, they've made a huge difference at Xenos. Tom Mendoza is going to be up here in a minute. My guess is, knowing how he talks about leadership and culture, that he's going to be talking about core values at some point. When I got to Xenos, it was really the first initiative. And it's what I told the board in my 90-day plan. Number one, we need to build a culture around a set of core values that are unbreakable. And it's these five that are our core values. And I'm actually going to start at the right. And I'm going to tell you, this is the one that hangs in my office, win with integrity. And I love it. It's, to me, in many ways, I don't want to say it's the most important. But if we're not going to keep our integrity, um, it's not worth doing this. So when people walk in my office, that's the first thing they see. We're not going to bend any rules to achieve business results ever. Um, so that's really important to me. All of these are important. No name jerseys, that's speaking to it's the logo on the front of the jersey that matters, not the one on the back. That's actually Notre Dame, which is Tom's alma mater, and I'm sure we'll, we'll hear about that. Um, Need for speed, you know, it's about building a culture where people are in a hurry to get the job done, that they're willing to take risks and maybe even make a mistake once in a while and not get reprimanded for it, but actually get encouraged to take risks and make a mistake. People who do speaks to the, the things I just mentioned a minute ago, the people that we hire and what's core to them. It's not just people that are trying to build a great company or trying to build great software. It's people that are great human beings. That's who we want at Xenos, people that are trying to change the world plant a flag, have a shared legacy with a lot of other people. And then finally, the cornerstone of Xenos over the last four years is customers for life. You know, we couldn't do it without you. And if I looked at the one core value that has made the most difference in our history to date, it's that one. I've had two people come up to me, and you may not like this, but two people in the last three months say to me, Greg, we may have taken customers for life too far. And I thought, thank you. That is music to my ears, that we're even having that discussion. Everything at Xenos is built around the customer. Everything. Nothing is more important than you. I show you these customer names. Many of you are in the room. Again, there's 200 different companies that are going to walk through this building over the next three days. These are a few of them. But the logos are not what's important to me in any way at all. What's important to all of us are the people behind the logos. And the way that we measure that, and the way that we react to that, and the, we, we, the way we make that part of who we are is with this concept of a Zelfie. And I'd be surprised if there's anyone in this room that doesn't know what a Zelfie is, so I won't take too much time on it. But it's this concept that happened years ago that Brian was uh, going on a road trip, Brian Wilson, and I said, hey, when you're there, just take a quick picture at the customer site. I want to see what it looks like. And I want to feel it. And I want to know. And I was going to miss him, frankly. So I said, send me a picture. So he sent me that picture, and the Zelfies were born. And now you know, they're all over the place. And I'll show you a few in a minute. What I want to do 
is challenge each of you. First of all, I want to thank you for allowing us to take these pictures with you. They're incredibly meaningful to the company. They, they come through a Slack channel. I look at every single one. They go up on a wall. And they help all of us just remind each other of why we're doing this. And uh, it's super cool. What I want to do is show you the top five selfies of all time. And I want to do this in the way that you'll think about how can you be more creative in the future to give us even more fun and wild selfies. So number five, the number five, number five selfie of all time, the fifth best. This is Adele with the US Air Force. And it's very meaningful. They're an incredible customer. They're doing a very important mission. Uh, it couldn't be any more important. And this was an event where they were uh, benefiting soldiers that were in special ops. And so it was very meaningful, and I was, I was great to, uh, happy to see this selfie. Number four, this was the first selfie from Down Under. And Michael, when he sent it, he sent it upside down, and I laughed very hard. And he told me when he sent it, he was laughing very hard. This is before he grew his beard. But you know, this was the first one. Now everyone who goes to Australia sends this that sends them upside down. But this was the first one, and so that got number four. All right, number three, OVH. So after, um, I love it when a customer or even a service provider says to me, you know, when they take you out to it, when someone says, hey, I'll take you out to an expensive dinner and buy you a bottle of wine, I'm like, that's not interesting to me. Let's go do something valuable. Let's go on a hike, or let's go benefit some charity. And this was the case with OVH and Xenos. So instead of getting together and going on some sales dinner, they said, let's go do cleanup for Hurricane Harvey in Houston. And pretty special to get that selfie. So that, that's number three. Number two, OK, it's, it's me. Sorry about that. But you know, the you know, when we first did this, and, and getting all 400 of my besties in, in one picture was terrific. And so that made my number two list. Um, and then the number one best selfie of all time. So this is literally getting in bed with the customer at sleep number. This one is probably an HR violation for sure. Um, but when uh, Aaron and Ramil and Mick and George went up to sleep number, uh, there was a, apparently a bed in the lobby. I swear it was the lobby. And, um, and they took a picture. And, uh, and so that one's number one all time. So I hope you guys take that as a challenge. You know, the selfies that are, that are out there, as I mentioned, we see them every day. They're incredibly powerful and incredibly meaningful. I'm so appreciative that you allow us to do them, and I, I hope that tradition continues. When I think about, I'm still talking about shared legacy here, I want to remind everyone, you know, when we think about the legacy we're trying to build here, we look out several years. And this is our latest. We kind of look out and say, what does Xenos want to look like? What is the legacy that we're trying to build out in 2022? And I wanted to mention some of these things. You know, you see, we want to have 1,000 enterprise customers. We want to be traded on the NASDAQ under the ticker ZNOS, which I reserved on my first day with the company. Uh, we want to have a billion dollar market cap, 500 employees in 15 countries. We want to be the largest and fastest growing company in Austin, Texas. We want to be in the leadership quadrant of Gartner's Magic Quadrant. And we want to be the leading provider of solutions for software defined IT operations. I want to burn that image in all of our minds because we need everyone working together to do that. That's the legacy we're trying to build. So when I look at this journey, our breakthrough journey, I want to look back in history a little bit and remind you of kind of where we came from. I mean, the company was founded in 05. In 06 was the first open source initiative for the company. The first Zenpack came out in 07. That's when um, Rackspace became a customer and still is a great customer. And then you've been lot through lots of things with us, version 3 and Impact, version 4 and SaaS in 2013, ServiceNow integration in 2014, um, the first Galaxy in 2015 in version 5, version 6 and 17 in winning ABJ Best Places to Work. That was a big milestone for us. And now on the eve of launching Xenos Cloud, we're thrilled about it. And it has all the elements of the breakthrough journey that I mentioned. It's an incredible challenge. It's got a giant payoff. And most importantly, it's a shared legacy driven by you, our incredible customers. So we don't want to go there alone. We can't get there alone. We need you in that rocket or in space with us. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. We need you together with us. So what I need you to do is go pack your bags, get in a roadster with us, fasten your seatbelt, grab your Slurpees. 
and come with us for the next three days on this journey, on this breakthrough journey through the galaxy, and hopefully through galaxies for many years to come. Thanks, and have a great galaxy. Okay, so um, I want to say a couple of other words before I transition it over to Tom Mendoza, who's our keynote for today. I want to thank um, our great sponsors. Without our sponsors, we wouldn't be able to make this work. And uh, the, the, you're all incredible. I won't name you all. I will mention the two platinum sponsors, Google, Google Cloud and NTT Data. And I'd love a round of uh, applause for all of our great sponsors. Thank you. Thank you.